The program was developed after years of frustration and failure in working with people who were on the street in New York City. People that we would uh, take to the hospital or who would get arrested or would be in and out of shelter or drop-in centers. And we were determined to get them help. And we thought that the best way to help them was to get them into treatment. And we went treatment back to the street, treatment back to the street, and it was clearly not the way to go. And then a moment of, um, I would call it a leap of faith, we decided to do something different, which is to try an intervention that the people who were homeless actually wanted. And they wanted a place to live more than anything else. We developed a program that would take people literally from the streets into an apartment of their own hoping that it would work for some. And what in fact happened is that it worked tremendously well for uh, many. We were hoping that if it worked as well as, as business as usual, which was about 40 or 50 percent, we were doing something terrific for a group that would not be able to make it through the usual system. But right from the beginning, we had an 85% success rate. 85% for people that no one else could serve. So we realized early on we were onto something very, very useful. I was actually talking to somebody earlier today and I was telling them that this work of helping people who are homeless find a home, address their health, get income, uh, and trying to engage the community while we do all that is really, really hard work. And yet the amazing thing is so many people want to be a part of it which it just doesn't seem to make sense. Why are so many people drawn to this? And I thought about when we did the registry in January, where we wanted to go out and find the chronically homeless, and we asked people to help us, and 287 people volunteered to get up before dawn and wander around under bridges and on the streets and in the woods, trying to find their neighbors who were chronically homeless. I thought. What, how do you put those two things together? The work is so hard, it's kind of scary in some ways, and yet so many people want to do it. And I do think it speaks to something in the human nature that people just want to make a difference. They want to have an impact. They want to feel like they're contributing. I was homeless at one time, and. Uh, that was back in 83 uh, in D.C. and I lived on the streets. I'm a recovering drug addict, uh, 26 years of uh, recovery. I have a, a background in substance abuse counseling, so, you know, this is right where I need to be. I know what it's like to be out here. I know what it's like to use up all your money and then try to look around and say, well, you know, what happened? The, the day that you want to stop is the day that you want to stop and the day that I'll be there, okay? Okay. Take it easy, all right? All right, y'all. We're not geniuses. We're not the greatest moral giants. There's just something that compels people to want to do this work. And the only thing I can conclude is people know they are blessed, that they have been blessed, and now they want to be good stewards of those blessings. And so I, when I think about it, that's kind of our job, is, is to be stewards of blessings. I mean, you ain't got to do this by yourself. Now, who are you? Barry. Barry? Yep. Okay. You ain't got to do this by yourself. I came to Urban Ministries one time and realized that's where I needed to be. 
and I just stayed. And so month after month, I kept coming back. While it can be heartbreaking to hear some of the circumstances, <clears throat> I also get to hear a lot of stories about how Urban Ministry Center is helping. Because so we go out with the outreach workers and uh, to hear them talk about the connections. They know them by name, they know their faces, they know their situations, and how strongly the staff is pulling people towards um, solutions is, is very, it's very uplifting. And like I said, it's nice to be able to see that and just kind of stand by sometimes and, and watch it happen. Morning, Larry. 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 We got connected with Larry through a community referral. We had been unable to find Larry for a long time. It's pretty deep back in the woods. We start the process of outreach. You know, our first goal is to build a relationship with someone, to be a familiar face, and to demonstrate to somebody that we're, you know, someone who can be trusted, that wants to help them do whatever it is they want to do. My, my impression is that he's just been a hardworking blue collar guy most of his life. He had some difficulties at the outset of his life with learning that weren't his fault at all, that really, really made it difficult for him. So he has worked hard with his body his entire life. Once he got injured, you know, it was really difficult for him to work. So uh, I think in his recollection, it's been about 15 years since he's been inside. You know, he's a little bit older and his health is a little more fragile and obviously we want everyone to be housed before the winter. But Larry especially, we are working right now to get his application prepared and sent in. And, you know, the only thing we're waiting for, honestly, is his ID. I'm not in charge of everything, but I would certainly love for him to be housed within a month or two months. Yeah, I like my coffee. Mm, hot right now. <laughs> I want for Larry to be housed and to be able to do whatever the heck he wants to do. That'd be, that's my dream come true for Larry. It feels like we're so close and every person we meet, you know, you just want to have an opportunity. You just don't want to have anybody to have to wait. We are committed to finding housing for everybody who's chronically homeless by the end of next year. I actually love to go and sit in the apartment of somebody that I help house and um, it's reminisce. You know, kind of talk about day one and how did it feel to come in your apartment, walk into your apartment to, for the first time and hold your keys and, you know, people, they have different struggles, but to sit back and see people have achieved their goals on their own pretty, for the most part, you know, uh, in, a, in a pretty short amount of time once they're housed, you know, that's kind of the proof in the pudding. This is the moment we've been fighting for, right? This is our opportunity to really end chronic homelessness. And it's not about Urban Ministry Center doing it. It's about the whole community getting behind the goal and coming together. Whenever there's a problem in this community, people come together and try to solve it. And this issue is no different than that. And I feel like we have the best people around the table um, who are really committed to solving this problem. And I know we'll get it done. I feel like every day is just another experience in learning more about what it means to work with people who are marginalized, people who have very little trust. So outreach is really that first step, um, just making that initial connection in order to carry them through the journey. There are men and women of all ages sleeping on the streets and that is something that does not need to happen. We do not give up on people. So to be somebody that can help in that, it's amazing, it really is. It really is about changing the narrative of American history, about making people believe it's possible that homelessness doesn't have to be with us. I was on the streets uh, close to 11 years, and I, was, I slept wherever I could sleep. If it hadn't been for Urban Ministries right now, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be sitting right here right now. Saved my life. I don't ever want to be out there again.
It's okay, I know nothing's wrong. Nothing. I, I got plenty of time. I, you got light in your eyes. And you're standing here beside me. I love the passing of time Never for money, always for love Cover up and say goodnight, say goodnight Home is where I wanna be But I guess I'm already there I come home Can tell one from the other Did I find you or you find me There was a time before we were born Someone asked, this is where I'll be Yeah. Uh-huh.